Okay, good afternoon, guys. Here's your AP2 lesson recap for Tuesday, September 15th. Bobo, Bobo the Clown is shot out of a cannon. The efficiency of the exploding gunpowder in propelling Bobo is probably closest to. And we have some choices, 0, 10, 90, or 100%. So I'll give you a second to think about that. <clears throat> You might be tempted to say 90 or 100, but there's two we can rule out right away. Can't say 0% because Bobo is propelled out of the cannon. And we can't say 100% because potential energy of height, kinetic energy of motion are not the only things we have going on here. So we're down to 10 or 90. Well, if we look at it, we have 10% if we had to choose. That's because there are other energy forms being produced here in addition to kinetic energy of speed and potential energy of height. Last year it was all about forces. This year in AP2, it's all about energy forms. Okay. Well, what energy forms were produced that lowered the efficiency here? Well, heat, sound, and light. And heat is in all caps because it's probably the most important one. We're about to go into thermodynamics, and heat and heat loss and thermal energy are going to be big players in our everyday discussion, without a doubt. Disclaimer, at the circus, gunpowder is actually not used. Bobo would not survive the concussion. Potential energy in a spring, one-half kx squared is used. They add smoke and sound or a little FX special effect to make it look like at the circus that he was kaboomed out of the cannon. All right, let's talk a little bit about procedures and norms, behaviors for AP Physics 2. What you will need, textbook, notebook, pencil, calculator, ruler. Your textbook can stay at home. Your notebook can be pencil and paper notebook, or it can be digital on an iPad or other device. You're going to need some type of ruler to act mainly as a straight edge. I don't know if we'll be measuring much, but if you can get yourself a 15 centimeter, six inch ruler, English metric, ShopRite, Walmart, whatever, you're in good shape. And I, as you know, use a $12 Walmart calculator, the TI-30, your TI-80 whatevers with graphing and whatnot, all good to go. They can handle it. All right, as long as you can do scientific notation, sine, cosine, tangent, you're in good shape. What you will do, well, when you're in class with me, uh, once a week with Alphabet Split and or Cyber Wednesday, uh, you'll take attendance if you're in the classroom. Let me rephrase that. You'll take attendance if you're in the classroom for me, noting your seat assignment. If you're at home, you'll sign in with Warrior Corner. You'll open up the Zoom link so you see me on Zoom. You'll go to the question of the day that's located in the lesson plans, the one-stop shopping. Everything is in one place. And you'll read the question of the day and put your answer in the Zoom chat box. What I expect from you, attend class, take notes, ask questions, do your homework, especially the reading by the start of the next class. We meet three times a week. Three times a week only, so your homework is simply do by the start of the next class unless otherwise stated specifically in Google Classroom with a turn-in date given there. But your reading and any book problems would be due by the next class so we can talk about it in the next class. Okay, now we're going to do a little tour of the Google Classroom. I've added some new sections. So let me see if I can do this. And here is Google Classroom. We're still rolling. Uh, you'll notice the daily lesson and homework assignments Tuesday. You click on it, you pull this up, and this is what I call one-stop shopping. You scroll down to period six, AP Physics two. Here's your daily attendance seat assignment. If you're in the classroom for me, here's textbook issue. If you still haven't gotten a book, you need to get one. Uh, here's the Zoom conference link for me, and then the question of the day. You click on that and return back. So you click on the question of the day, Bobo the Clown. It comes up. You determine your answer. You go back to Zoom, and you enter it in the Zoom chat box. 
and then I judge when and where we take over class from there and we proceed. Okay, your homework is here for tonight. It's read section 1.1 to 1.2 and outline it in your notebook. Read outline section 11.1, 11.2 in your notebook. Do problem page 345, problem number nine in your notebook. So that's for by the next class, which would be tomorrow, Cyber Wednesday. Okay, uh, I said it has a new look. It definitely does. These will always be here, the one-stop shopping. Uh, the next lesson plan would be here, uh, perhaps Wednesday, for Cyber Wednesday, what we're going to do. And then, uh, again, for the Friday lesson. So it's one click. However, I've added some new sections here. Student resources, useful stuff. This is a daily agenda and homework log. I think I'm going to change this to daily agenda and homework at a glance. It's redundant. It's a chart for me, but I decided to share it with you guys. If you just want to see what we did, uh, today we're going to look at using Kami, and we're going to introduce the concept of efficiency, and here's the same problem I've already read. So we will see. I'll add the newest at the top. It will push down, and you can see at a glance what we did on what day, what homework was assigned, and when it was due. But it is redundant. It's available in the Google Classroom in two places now, under the daily lesson plan and under student resources, okay? I like the, the chart because I can see the homework all at a glance. And as we proceed, it'll make life a little easier. Okay, so that was this. I'll hit the present button. That was a tour of what's new in Google Classroom. Okay, what else? Well, we opened the blank page in Kami and we produced these things as practice. Circle, a solid fill circle, an open right triangle, hold down the shift key to get a circle, hold down the shift key to get a right triangle, and then using the fill tool. Make sure you have these skills. Make sure that you can use, whoops, make sure that you can use the equation editor menu in conjunction with the keyboard. You can click, for example, in the delta x equals vit, you can click the delta from the equation and x from the keyboard equals from the equation and then vi from the keyboard. You can select the i and make it subscript. One slash two in Kami becomes a perfect one half when you type one slash two from the keyboard. So pretty awesome. Make sure you have these Kami skills. Okay, we talked a little bit about energy forms now the change in energy in the next of team the next several weeks or months whatever will be any change in kinetic plus any change in potential plus any change in thermal plus any change in chemical plus yada 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 will equal the work done on or by the system this will become more clear as we get into it and start doing problems will we always have five terms no we may have one term equals work done we may have two terms equals work done and we'll define what work done is, and you'll be comfortable with that. Okay, we talked about this situation here. The power company, electrical generating company, will at times pump water uphill. So let's say they put 100 joules of energy into pumping this water uphill. Because of friction, because of heat generated, thermal energy loss, if you will, 25 joules of heat escape out into the atmosphere. That gives us potential energy in the water of 75 joules of energy available to do useful work. This will now fall, again generating friction, and we will lose, once again, 25 joules of energy lost in the form of thermal, thermal energy or heat flow into the environment, and we end up with a mere 50 joules at the end recovered available to do uh, useful work, okay? So when we look at this, we want to know the efficiency of the process. Well, the answer is very simple. Efficiency is basically work output, what you get out, divided by what you put in. But the W's actually stand for work. Work output divided by work input. We got 50 joules of work available here, output, we pumped in 100, our efficiency is 50%. Now, you may say that's not very efficient, fine, but
but it's 50 joules of energy available to do useful work rather than none. And this is a very common trick with the electric company and the water company at night. They pump water up to great height, and then during the peak demand hour, 7 a.m., when everybody's getting ready to go to work and every school and office and factory are opening, uh, the water can flow downhill with gravity and produce electricity, or the water company fills the tank at night, and then 7 a.m., when everybody's showering to go to work, gravity feeds out to all the homes. Very efficient procedure. Well, hmm. Very interesting procedure. There are heat losses, so the efficiency is not 100%. Okay? Uh, efficiency, what you get divided by what you had to pay. What you get divided by what you had to pay. And at any time, if you want to stop or back up this video, you know cyber students, you can do that. Okay? There are, we will learn that there are process and fundamental limitations that keep efficiency less than 100%. Speaking of cyber students, if your alphabet split, I highly encourage you to attend class live. Highly encourage you. We meet three times a week, twice at uh, 11, uh, I'm sorry, twice at 1016 for the 70 minute block and on Cyber Wednesdays for the 30 minute block. I encourage you to join us in the classroom. Obviously you're with us through Zoom, when you're at home, join us through Zoom rather than these uh, condensed lessons. Okay? Uh, student walks upstairs, increasing its, his or her potential energy by 1,800 joules. The body used about 7,200 joules of chemical energy to do this. Can we compute the efficiency for this action? Well, what you get out divided by what you pay, what you put in. So 1,800 joules. A potential height is what we got out, divided by 7,200 joules that we burned up internally, lunch, dinner, etc. a mere 25%. Please note, efficiency can be 0.25 or 25%. Both are equally common. Both are equally correct. Light bulb efficiency. A 15-watt compact fluorescent twist, shown here, versus an old-fashioned 75-watt incandescent bulb each produce about three watts of visible light and a whole lot of heat. Three watts light, a whole lot of heat. What are their efficiencies? Well, we go to the old standard work out over work in. Note that the efficiencies are computed using the energy in one second. So three watts means three joules per second. So the joules are gonna cancel. If you use watts, you get the same number. The watts would cancel leaving you with the decimal 0.20, 20%. The incandescent old-fashioned bulb, three joules over 75.04, uh, or translation, 4%. They both produce the same limited visible light, but the compact fluorescent is a little more efficient than the incandescent bulb, which is why the big switch to compact fluorescent and now LED, etc. Okay, uh, lastly, train number one uses 10 kilojoules. Let me move me out of the way here. To lift a 50 kilogram box to the roof of the building, crane two uses a 20 kilojoules of energy to lift a 100 kilogram box, which is more efficient. We don't even need to go kilograms to newtons. It's 500 newtons if you insist. Kilograms times 10, right, is weight. Just, and then times the height, we don't care. 50 kilograms is what we get out on the roof, divided by 10, that's a ratio of five, and then 100 kilograms on the roof, divided by 20, that's a ratio of five. So both cranes have the same efficiency. And that's about it for today. For next time, we're gonna be reading about chemical energy in the body, and we have this runner moving at constant speed on level ground. Chemical energy in the runner's body is being transformed into what as she runs? Kinetic, potential, thermal. Think about that for a split second. She's moving at constant speed. Is her kinetic changing? If we're not sure about that, put that on hold. Is her potential energy of height changing as she runs across? No. So it's not going into, as we convert chemical energy from her breakfast or lunch 
It's not going into potential energy of height, and it's not going into kinetic energy of speed. Not increasing it anyway. She, Mr. G, she has kinetic energy. Okay, great, super. But she's not increasing it, so all she's doing is fighting friction. She's fighting thermal energy loss. So chemical energy is being converted into thermal energy. She has kinetic, but her additional workout is not increasing it. She may have some potential energy flying, walking a certain height above the ground. Obviously, she's on the ground, but you could define the baseline to be, she could be running on a plateau. She could be running on an elevated track, an indoor track in a building, and she would definitely have potential energy, but it's not changing. So her continued process is going into thermal energy. And that's all we have for you today. See you online on Cyber Wednesday. This is Mr. G signing off.